For many experienced users, installing a new Linux distribution is simple, but for inexperienced users, it can feel a little more intimidating with mistakes bound to happen along the way. Today, we'll be explaining how to install Garuda Linux, our refreshingly modern Arch Linux-based distribution, from beginning to end. If you happen to stumble across any issues instead of leaving a comment beneath this video, please make a post on the Garuda Linux forum. There will be a link in the description. The trouble with comments is that you would likely wait a long time for an answer without any guarantee that your problem would be fixed. The official forum is where all the Garuda Linux team members and regulars are able to give the highest quality responses. Make sure you're prepared. You're going to need a USB drive with at least four gigabytes of capacity on hand. Everything on that USB drive will be deleted. It's also important to make some decisions before you begin the process about the system that you want. Do you want to completely erase your operating system or install Garuda Linux alongside another operating system? Are you okay with your data being deleted in the installation process, either on purpose or on accident? Either way, backups are important. Although everything we will be doing today is entirely reversible, any deleted data is not coming back. So make sure you've either managed the risk or you're okay with the risk of losing files or the certainty of losing files if you plan to delete everything else and install Garuda Linux alone. The first step is to choose your Garuda Linux edition. Don't worry, the core tools provided with each edition are identical. The only differences are which programs come pre-installed for your convenience and which desktop environment will be installed, as well as the theme that desktop environment will use. It helps to think of the desktop environment as the visual flavor of the main software experience. The settings menus, available desktop effects, and utilities such as the file explorer all make up your desktop environment. If you're a bit more experienced in using Linux, you can generally pick whatever you want from this list. But for new users, we recommend any edition that uses KDE Plasma, GNOME, Cinnamon, or XFCE as the desktop environment. For the purpose of this guide, we'll be installing the Garuda Linux Mocha edition, which uses KDE Plasma as the desktop environment. Let's click on Download, and then we can confirm if our system meets the minimum requirements. Generally speaking, any modern device from the last decade will support everything necessary to run Garuda Linux with solid performance. Next, we'll select one of the download options. We'll pick Direct because it's the easiest, but if downloading directly from the website causes any trouble, you could also pick SourceForge. A BitTorrent fan might prefer to download the torrent file instead. If you know how to, you can also verify the SHA-256 checksum to ensure that it matches your downloaded file. And just like that, our download is underway. Next, we need to download a tool to prepare the USB drive for us. If you have a specific preference, you can use that, but we generally recommend Ventoy. A link to Ventoy will be in the description. You'll then need to download the correct Ventoy version for your current operating system. After downloading and extracting the correct archive, it's time to insert the USB drive. Everything on the USB drive will be deleted, so be prepared. If you already use Linux, you'll be launching the ventoyweb.sh file from a terminal using bash and root permissions. You'll then need to navigate to the address shown in the terminal using your web browser. Make sure the correct USB drive is selected and press install. After a short moment, the USB drive is configured for use with Ventoy. we can then mount the USB drive Ventoy partition. You can ignore the Ventoy EFI partition if you see it. It's of no relevance to us in this case. If you use Windows, you'll launch Ventoy2disk.exe instead and repeat the same steps. After we've mounted the Ventoy USB stick, we can then copy over our newly downloaded Garuda Linux ISO file. This will take a moment. When it's done, make sure to safely eject the USB drive. This is very important, especially in Linux, because Linux might still be copying the file in the background a few seconds after it appears to be finished. The safe ejection may take quite a while depending on the speed of your USB drive, so just be patient. And we're done. Now comes the difficult part that's different for everyone. You will need to boot your system into your motherboards or laptops setup utility. It's also commonly called the BIOS, or the UEFI. 
If you do not know how to do this already, you may have to check the manual of your specific device for precise instructions. Your computer might also briefly show you a shortcut key when you first turn it on. Once you've opened the setup utility, you'll need to disable the fast boot feature if you can find it. If not, it's not a big deal. Secondly, you'll need to disable secure boot. This step is mandatory and there's no way around it. There may be an off switch for secure boot in your system, but there also might not be. If not, Check if there's a way you can put your system into secure boot setup mode. On some systems, this is referred to as deleting the platform keys. Once you've done that, secure boot should be disabled. Again, refer to your device's manual for details. If possible, you should also disable any legacy boot or CSM boot options, short for compatibility support module. This may mean setting the boot mode to UEFI only or similar. The final thing we'll do in the setup utility is prioritize booting from the USB drive over the system drive, essentially allowing us to start the system from the USB stick instead of your existing system. You can and probably should reverse this final step when you're finished installing Garuda Linux. Now plug in the USB drive we safely ejected earlier. Make sure to save and exit from the setup utility. When you start the device now, the system should boot into Garuda Linux's live boot menu. We can use the arrow keys and enter key here. Be sure to use the up or down arrow key at least once so the timer at the bottom will stop. Here you can configure your language of choice as well as your keyboard layout. Be sure to configure at least the keyboard layout correctly. Next, we'll need to choose between two different ways to start our system. We have the choice between the proprietary drivers option and the open source drivers option. You should always pick the proprietary drivers option unless you have a specific reason to only pick the open source drivers, such as a moral objection to proprietary software. Garuda Linux will automatically make sure to only install proprietary drivers if they're actually needed, even if you choose proprietary drivers. And just like that, the system is booting. It's gonna take some time to verify nothing got corrupted along the way and load everything it needs, which may be a little slow depending on your USB drive. So just give it some time. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, it will need some additional time to prepare your drivers. Boom, just like that, we're booted into the live system. That's the biggest hurdle, smooth sailing from here. Here you can play around with things a little bit, just remember that nothing that you do will here will be saved and any changes you make will be stored only temporarily in memory. There's a risk you can run out of memory if you download too much, so we recommend finishing the installation before installing software or updates. We can start the system installer with the shortcut on the desktop or through a button in Ronnie, the Garuda Linux helper utility. This screen will show you any warnings if any problems were found, like if your system does not meet the minimum requirements or is booted into legacy or CSM mode. But in this case, we just get to pick the language for both the installer and the system here. Next, we'll be asked for where we're located. This is used for the time zone, so make sure to pick the biggest city within your time zone in your country that's also the closest to you if there's multiple choices. Next, we'll once again be asked for our keyboard layout, this time with a proper preview to help us make the correct decision more precisely. The next menu is important. Here we get to choose if we want Garuda Linux to replace a specific partition, shrink an existing partition to install Garuda Linux alongside another system, or start fresh entirely. In general, we strongly advise against using manual partitioning. There's a lot that can go wrong here, even for experienced users. For example, Garuda Linux only supports BTRFS. There is no EXT4 support whatsoever. If we select Install Alongside, for example, we'll get to select how much storage space we want to assign to Garuda Linux. The system absolutely needs at least 30 gigabytes of space, but we recommend much more than that if you want to be able to use your system for anything more than looking at it. For the purpose of this demonstration, we will select Erase Disk, which will make the Garuda Linux installer set up the entire drive from scratch, making sure there are no leftovers from any other systems. 
Next, we get to choose our username and password. The first field will be our display name, or what's shown from inside the desktop environment. You can use a full name or alias here. The second field is the actual username used by Garuda Linux. You'll want to remember this one. No special symbols are allowed in the username. The next two fields are for the password. You'll want to enter the same password twice here. There are no minimum requirements, but we recommend using something secure, of course. The checkbox for the administrator account should also stay checked to make sure you remain able to log in if something goes wrong with your system that's preventing you from signing in normally. Now you'll be shown a final summary of all the steps the installer is about to perform. Make sure everything is to your liking before pressing the install button. Just like that, we're off to the races. Don't remove the USB stick while the installation is in progress. Once the installation is finished, we'll press Done. We'll then shut down the system gracefully through the menu and wait for the device to go dark and the fans to stop spinning. It's time to remove the USB drive. If you want to, now would be a good time to change the boot priority back to the system drive. Then we'll start the device back up and the system should boot into Garuda Linux bootloader. Here you can also select any other operating systems installed alongside Garuda Linux but we'll just ask the bootloader to boot into Garuda Linux normally. We'll log in. And bam, welcome home. The setup assistant will open. If you haven't set up a working internet connection yet, now's the time to do so. The setup assistant will wait until the connection is ready. It will then ask you to apply a system update, which will guide you through. It's all automatic after entering your password and confirming, so nothing to worry about. Finally, after the update is complete, the setup assistant will restart itself and give you a list of programs you might want to install to feel right at home. Once we've done that, the setup assistant will once again ask for our password to install everything. And boom, that's it. We'll close the setup assistant and Ronnie, our friendly utility, will open ready for you to take over the driving seat. Welcome to Garuda Linux. Just some final notes before you go. If something can be done with Ronnie, like apply system updates, you should do it from there. Garuda Linux is not your average Arch Linux based distribution. For example, we have a custom utility for applying system updates called Garuda-Update that allows the Garuda Linux team to perform certain manual interventions automatically and keep things running smooth. So instead of Pacman-SYU, you would instead run Garuda-Update. There are a few tools like this that are unique to Garuda Linux, and Ronnie is the best way to make sure that you're using the correct tool for any given situation. If you have any questions, problems, or just want to hang out, we ask that you please get in touch on the Garuda Linux form. We'll have a link down in the description. We'll also have some other useful links for beginners down in the description for you to learn at your own pace. Thanks for watching and happy Garuding.